So if you had an engine out, do you think there's some sort of secret uh, maneuver that you can do to extend the glide, or maybe only superior pilots uh, need to apply? Uh, that, that's what we're going to talk about today. Hey, I'm Scott Perdue, and today on Flywire, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about extending the glide, okay? It's basically coming from November 125 Whiskey Charlie, an A36 in Lakeland, Florida, uh, who uh, had an engine out and uh, crashed short of the runway, okay? And uh, was not in control uh, when they crashed. So um, there's uh, really very little doubt out there. The last ADSB head I had was at 1,000 feet, basically, so it's kind of hard to interpolate uh, exactly what happened, but uh, I'm, they weren't in the control when they, when they landed and the airplane was pretty mangled up. Fortunately, they, uh, uh, as of what I know right now, both of them survived with serious injuries. So let's get to it. Okay, late breaking news. I already filmed this video and uh, it, all ready to go. And then uh, NTSB released a preliminary report for 125 Whiskey Charlie. And there's some pretty important stuff here that uh, modifies a little bit about what I was saying. Um, and point of fact that there's a lot of ADSB data that they had that they didn't share. And I was unable to do some of that. Uh, plus they had radio traf air traffic control communications that I wasn't able to get. But, so here we go. This is the uh, quick update here. According to recorded air traffic control communications with the uh, Lakeland Tower, the flight uh, 125 Whiskey Charlie was instructed by the local controller to join the right downwind leg of the airport traffic pattern for runway 9 at or above 1,500 feet MSL. Then the local controller observed the airplane going descending to 800 feet and informed the pilot that the flight needed to be at or above 1,500 feet to turn southbound because he obviously had conflicting traffic. An occupant of the airplane advised the controller of an engine failure. They're, they're unclear about whether he actually declared emergency. Uh, I knew that uh, somehow that, uh, that ATC had been informed that there was an engine failure, so this was it. And the airplane was then cleared to land on runway, runway 5, and then subsequently cleared to land on runway 27 after a transport category airplane that was on approach to runway 9 was instructed to go around. However, the pilot or passenger uh, advised them, the controller that the airplane could not reach the runway. According to ADSB data between uh, 1423 uh, and 38 seconds and 1425 and 37 seconds, so about two minutes, the flight was about four nautical miles east-southeast from the approach end of runway 27 at Lakeland, and the airplane flew in a westerly direction consistent with entering the downwind leg of the airport traffic pattern for runway 9. After 25 and 37 seconds, the airplane turned slightly to the right and then again proceeded briefly on a westerly direction. At 1426.25, the airplane turned to the right onto a northwest west northwesterly direction toward the approach end, toward the approach end of runway 27 until 2753, at which time the when the flight was about 0.8 tenths of uh, about eight tenths of a nautical mile from and 101 degrees from the approach end of runway 27. And then the airplane turned right to a north-northwesterly direction. And the last ADSB target was 0.68 nautical miles at a 092 bearing from the approach end of 27 at Lakeland. And I'm, uh, I've plotted the 27 runway in and that point, so I got the approximate point to show you the point of impact. And the airplane impacted a tree about 12 feet above the ground level and then impacted a trailer and the ground. Uh, Post-crash fire nearly consumed the cockpit and the cabin. The airplane was recovered for, with, for further examination of the airframe and the engine. There was one fatal. The, uh, apparently the non-passenger pilot rated uh, passenger was uh, fatally injured. So we're sorry for his, the, their families and their, their loss. But, it still looks like to me like they tried to stretch the glide to make it, and I continue with the regularly scheduled programming to show just what happens when you try to st stretch the glide and try to, instead of accepting the physics of the situation and attempt to land under control. 
Right, the question of the day is, uh, in 125 Whiskey Charlie's case, is how far can you stretch a glide? Um, happens a lot in engine out situations where people can't quite make it or uh, the field that they've chosen or they think they, they're going to some place that they can't make. Um, they just try to stretch the glide. I mean, I'm going to keep flying, right? So today we're going to look at what happens when you try to stretch a glide. And remember I said that it's a physics thing. <coughs> so we're going to look at that. 125 Whiskey Charlie, uh, you know, I don't know what happened. Uh, we're going to have to look at the preliminary when it comes out to uh, have any kind of real data. Uh, looked at the ADSB, and uh, it looks to me like it was a classic engine out, and they tried to stretch the glide. That's what my look at it is right now. So this isn't a full up accident review, but it's a possibility. And uh, it's kind of important anyway, so I thought I'd make a video of it. That's kind of what's happening here. Whiskey Charlie, uh, Five Whiskey Charlie, what they did was, is they're based apparently at Lakeland. They went to uh, Sebring, possibly for lunch, and then they took off and they did a low approach at Arcadia, which is southwest of there. And then they went to Bartow, and it looks like they did a uh, basically a, a stop and go, perhaps, and uh, maybe a land and taxi back. I can't quite tell. Now the ADSB is continuous though. Then they went to Lakeland, and just before they got to Lakeland, this engine issue happened. Uh, then, when the engine issue happened, they tried to stretch the glide. I think. All right. It remains to be seen. Why the engine in issue happened, I don't know. Was it an engine fire? There was no fire at the scene. The air airplane impacted, and it looks to me like it impacted uh, in a in a slight uh, spin in an auto rotation. And the tail breaks off, and it's in a relatively flat attitude, not hugely nose down. And uh, so we're going to explore all that, what happens when you try to extend the glide and you don't make it. Well, how does the airplane depart? What does it act like? So we're going to look at that today. I'm going to do three runs. I'm going to start off at 85 knots because I think that's uh, pretty nearly what, uh, what happens. Continue to slow down from there. We're not going to intercept an 85 knot descent because I don't see that happening. There's several other accidents as well. But about 800 feet above our floor, we're going to intercept that, uh, that 85 knots and then start decelerating all the way down. And I'm looking to depart, uh, looking to be able to do that at about 7,800 feet, depending on these clouds around us. And uh, then uh, um, from that point, slow down and looking for the departure to happen somewhere around 300-ish feet above the ground because I think that's ground rush. Uh, that is ground rush when you're, that's how the eye works. So I think what's going to happen is, is when you see that, people start to pull back a little bit more. I got to stretch the guide. I got, oh my gosh, you're getting close to the ground. And then the departure happens and uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Three runs just to see, it, see what it looks like. There's a nice hole right there. I think I'll work over that hole. Winds are 19 knots pushing us to the east, northeast. Yeah, I'm going to disconnect the autopilot. I'm going to set a 6,000 foot floor. It's when I'm going to knock off any of this kind of crap. I'll turn the autopilot off because it's just going to argue with me. I'm not going to pull the prop back during these failures. I'm not seeing that happen. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that. I don't see any traffic. I don't see any on the uh, fish finder. Power's coming off. There's 85. So I'm going to keep, I'm extending the glide here. So I'm going to continually pulling it back. If I don't hit this designated floor just exactly, that's okay. I don't, I'm not too keen on it. What I really want to see is where the departure happens and, uh, We'll add 300 feet, or subtract 300 feet of that for the floor. So the difference between this and an A36 is an A36 is generally going to stall just past 65. 60 is 62, 3 knots, something depending on the airplane. This airplane is going to stall almost 10 knots slower. I'm going to kill that horn. I know all about it. Alright, there's 65. There's ground rush. And it off to the left. There's the departure and the recovery.
did is hold it in the stall and the airplane waffled a little bit and then off it went. This is also the first test of the flight test data from the G3X. It captures one second data for all kinds of stuff, so I'm hoping we're going to be able to use it to help us analyze what's going on. So right now we're climbing back up to our entry altitude. Looking for traffic. I don't see any on the fish finder. There's my hole back there. But I'm good to go on the hole as well. Got them right over Granbury Airport. I love it. All right. The power's coming off. There it is. There's my 85. Okay, I'm trying to stretch my glide. I see the airport out there. I can make it, I can make it, I can make it. Sure, I can make it. I can make it. Our descent rate's going through 800 feet right now, so I am slowing my descent rate. I'm not going to go very far. My speed, four speed isn't much. There's some way below best glide. There's 65 knots. We're still holding about 800 feet per minute. There's the brake. Off to the left. And there's the recovery. about where my floor is nominally my ground level is 7,000 feet based on my plan I tend you know plan profile so we're going to take a look at what attitude what descent rate we hit the ground so I'm going to have to compute that what kind of deceleration would that be if it's swampy ground or if it's firm dirt uh, the decelerations can be a little bit different force is equal mass times acceleration right Newton's second good for traffic ADSB is clear my hole's back at 9 o'clock right now. It's the last run. Pass that cloud. Right on the right. Alright, I'm in my hole. Pull the power. There's my 85 knots. There's my entry parameter, pretty close to my altitude. Okay, I'm extending the glide. Right now, I'm doing great. I'm extending the glide. I'm 600 feet per minute, 700 feet per minute. But I'm slowing down pretty rapidly. And that's that's a problem. Okay. Stagnating a little bit at 69. 65. This is where about where an 836 is going to stall. We're a little bit slower. All right, here we go. Again, to the left. Oh, nope. To the right, nope, to the left. There's the spin recovery. Interesting, now. So that was cool. I'm gonna reduce the data and go and see uh, what happened, and I'll talk about it and present the data probably over a voiceover. Okay, so there you saw the uh, video and so on, and I said uh, that what I was going to do was I was going to summarize, I was going to crunch the data, and I was going to summarize it and see if there's some sort of special uh, 
maneuver we can do to extend the glide and it turns out no it's just physics there's uh, best glide speed which gains you the maximum distance for the uh, altitude that you have and then there's min sink speed which uh, gives you the most time in the air for the altitude that you have okay anything in between there uh, it's kind of a muddle it's a mush but anything on either side of it uh, either, th either side of those speeds you're throwing away uh, altitude for not much gain and the trouble with min sink speed is is it's getting very close to the stall so in an A36 min sink turns out to be not everyone but uh, the A36 that I've flown min sink is about 76 knots stall speed is about 65 63 to 65 knots so there's not a large margin there uh, to avoid it so what I did was is uh, basically I did six uh, tries uh, tr six events and they all came down, it came down to about half right and half left rotation. Uh, I didn't uh, bias the uh, departure in any way other than I'm gonna extend the glide and I'm not quite to the runway yet and uh, then I get ground rush. Because when I look at most of these accidents and I do have ADSP data, most of these, uh, these uh, departures uh, happen about 300 feet, which is about the time you start to get ground rush from your eyes, the way your eyes work. I'm going to go into a longer dissertation about that. But um, nevertheless, that's what I wanted to see today is what happens or what kind of attitude range do we, can, can we expect to see of the airplane when it impacts the ground 280 to 300 feet above the ground. Okay, so the uh, first set I did, um, basically, uh, the, it took about six seconds and uh, to make that distance from I'm departing the airplane at ground rush to ground impact. Of course, mine was notional ground. It was just a, a basically a line in the sand and I wasn't paying any attention to it in the air. But when I calculated it later, it took six seconds to make that. The airplane had uh, done 213 degrees of rotation, heading rotation. That's about 36 degrees, a little less than 36 degrees per second. The actual vert vertical speed was uh, 46.7, 47 feet uh, per second. Okay, so it's going pretty fast. Uh, pitch uh, and roll, I think is very interesting. The pitch is about 60 degrees, and it turns out most of these, most of these six, the pitch at this point, at this ground impact, starting at 300, or 300 feet above the ground, the pitch is about 50 to 60 degrees of pitch, nose down. And the roll, in this case, the first one was uh, basically flat, okay? It was just a little bit of left bank. And, but mostly it varied between, uh, what I'm looking at is about uh, that one that was about flat and the rest of them were clustered around 20 degrees, um, between uh, 10 and 20 degrees of roll. Some to the right, some to the left, depending on which direction uh, it was going. If it was going right, the, the wing was down to the right, uh, or it was flat in that first case. So that to me is very interesting because that affects the uh, dynamic of the impact a lot as how, what the nose pitch down is and what the, what the, where the wing is. So in a right one, so about 10 to 20 degrees, it's going to be karate chopping the ground about like that, boom. And uh, that's gonna, it's gonna continue to rotate because the inertia of the airplane is in rotation. Um, so that's pretty interesting. I computed the G-force, pretty tough to do without knowing the exact parameters, but I approximated it uh, given how long, I, I estimated how long it would take to slow down and uh, how much distance it would take to do that given a hard surface. Dirt is a completely different situation. Uh, 125 Whiskey Charlie was in the parking lot of a, of a business, so it was a pretty hard surface, asphalt surface. Dinged it up a little bit, but didn't really damage it. So the numbers I got were varied between uh, basically 40 and 80 Gs of deceleration, okay? Uh, I think in the 40 G in particular, the, if it was fairly nose down with some pretty good roll, there should be some crash absorption and uh, that absorption would minimize the actual, it would take some of the deceleration out before it hit the cockpit of the airplane. And I think that's what we see in 225 uh, 
125 Whiskey Charlie because uh, the top of the airplane is pretty much off, the tail is ripped off and upside down, but you can see the door, one of the doors there on the left, there was a small fire, so not likely engine starvation. We don't know that yet. Uh, but that deceleration created by the nose down pitch and the wing uh, being a little bit lower probably uh, ameliorated, could have ameliorated that crash. The, the physics of this thing is, is you, know, you can't control the airplane. Uh, if you go below the stall speed, okay, um, you're just not going to be able to do that. Hope we learned something. The big, big takeaway is that uh, you can't stretch a glide. It's a physics thing. You have to stay with enough speed uh, to keep the airplane flying. And I preach that if uh, if you have the field made, you want to go to min sink so you can spend the most time in the air for the given amount of altitude you have. Okay, that's about 76 knots in this airplane in an A36 or this airplane, that Bonanza. So that, but you know, what I found is, is that really doesn't give you enough speed to flare. So the Beach put out a, an, a, an answer for that, and they call it the emergency approach speed for an engine out situation, 81 knots. And that gives you enough speed to flare, okay? So for me, that's kind of my floor. Unless I have to land short and all the rest of that stuff, generally I use 81 knots for every landing on short final. But for an engine out situation, that's exactly uh, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go to 81 knots and then finish up the whole approach that way uh, to maximize my time in the air. Uh, and uh, that's what I want. That's my plan, my engine out plan. Okay, so... Um, you can't stretch a glide if you get too slow. You know, you get your descent descent rate's going to pick up because you're going to depart, <laughs> and you're not going to have enough altitude to recover. If this, most of these stalls are happening about three, two hundred, two fifty ish above the simulated floor, the ground, and uh, it would be disastrous. You don't have enough altitude to recover from a departure like that, and you're going to hit the ground. And our little bodies are not going to survive that. So we hope we hope we learned something uh, from this video about stretching the glide, as in you can't do it. Don't try to do it. Uh, if you can't make an airport, you can't make a field that works for you, you can't make a road that works for you, then land in the trees as slow as you possibly can. Put your flaps out. That'll, make, that'll help you out. Uh, at that point, the flaps are, you know, damage is not that important. Uh, trying to keep, the, keep yourselves alive. The cockpit intact so you stay alive you have room to stay alive that's the most important thing so that's the thing hope you liked the video if you did hit like and subscribe it looks a little bit like this here and uh my uh i want to thank my patreon supporters they're up here uh without you guys it'd be a lot harder to do this uh to do these videos i'll leave a link down below if you'd like to uh, support the channel through a patreon i'd sure appreciate that anyway Hope we learned something. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Flywire.